So now we're going to start with this simple example. What is the length of the line segment joining the points 3, 10, and 7, 8? So the first way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use the distance formula that we just calculated straight away. Okay? So we're going to call this technique 1. Okay? Technique one. So we recall here our distance formula, okay? That the distance joining the distance of the segment joining x1 y1 and x2 y2 is d, where d is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to list my points here. I know sometimes I might be too like careful about this, but I want you guys to get into this habit of labeling stuff like the way I do, because that will also help to prevent you from making uh, what one might call careless mistakes. So I'm going to label this one, let's say, x1, y1, and I'm going to label this one x2, y2, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my formula down without plugging in first, and then I'm going to plug in. So my distance is going to be the square root. One of the things I often hear from my students, and I want to tell you this right now, is that they say, well, David, when I'm going to actually apply this, um, you know, maybe I don't have time to, like, go through all these steps. And what I want you all to know is the following thing. If you practice correctly, consistently, take your time practicing correctly, every time you practice correctly you will not notice it but over the course of time speed you will become faster but more importantly your speed will not come at the expense of carelessness your speed will not come at the expense of a lack of understanding and you will become genuinely faster in a positive way and that is more valuable so anyway so i write on this like this now i'm going to plug in because I went through the, the labor of like labeling them, I know that my x, so I'm going to do the square root of x2, which is 7, minus my x1, which is 3, that's going to be squared, plus my y2, which is 8, minus my y1, which is 10, and squared. I know that 7 minus 3 is 4, so that's going to be the square root of 4 squared, plus 8 minus 10, that's negative 2, squared, I know that 4 times 4 is 16, so this will be the square root of 16. Negative 2 squared is 4, so it'll be 16 plus 4, which will be the square root of 20. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the square root of 20. First of all, I know that I need to find the factor tree of 20. I know that 20 is 2 times 10, and I know that 10 is 2 times 5. Therefore, I can write down the square of 20 as... Uh, the square root of 20 is the square root of 2 times 2 times 5. And in fact, I can double check that. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20. So I can see that I've replaced 20 with its prime factorization. Now here, if I have a pair of 2's inside, I can pull out a 2. So I get 2 square root of 5. That's my square root of 20. So finally, So I can say, okay, aha, um, I can see that, um, I can see that the distance of the segment joining these two points is the number 2 square root of 5, okay? I hope you all have enjoyed this technique, and now we're going to go on to technique 2. So technique 2 is basically going to be that we're going to plot these points. And we're going to basically form the right triangle. And then we're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem correctly. So, okay, so here. Now, one of the things I want you to notice about whenever I'm going to graph something is that I'm very judicious, or at least I try to be judicious, about how much of the graph to show and where along the x-axis I, where along the x and y-axis I show, okay? Because I always like to draw my graphs in such a way that I'm focusing on the important details. Here, if you notice, I don't need any negatives. I only need y's in the range of 8 to 10. I only need x's in the range of 3 to 7. 
So if I wanted to, I can just basically say, okay, this is my portion of my y-axis, where it's like, let's say, 7, 8, 9, 10, say. And then I can put like a little squiggly like this to indicate that it continues. And then I can put here my x-axis, right? But again, like I can put a squiggly here to indicate that I'm only showing like a certain part of it. What part do I need to show? I need to show 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay? I know this looks like cheating to you guys, but you know, that's just the way it is. So now I'm going to plot this point 310. 310. is right there because the x coordinate is 3 the y coordinate is 10 so I go 3 in the x and then 10 in the y my second point is 7 8 so it has a 7 in the x coordinate so I go here and then I go up to 8 let me see if I get this right something like right there it's 7 along the x uh, right 7 along the x then up to the 8 okay and so what I see is I have this right triangle. I have drawn dotted the the vertical line of the the vertical side of the triangle, the horizontal side of the triangle, but the but the the segment that I'm interested in finding the length of I have put solid. Now we can see here. So this just to remind you guys, this is a right triangle. Okay. And uh, let me see here. Stand by a second. And so here we remind ourselves the Pythagorean theorem in a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, which is just as we have pictured here, right? We have leg A, we have this leg B, and we have the hypotenuse C. The hypotenuse always, of course, is the segment that, that is across from the right angle. Then we must have the relationship that the A squared plus the B squared, that is to say the sum of the squares of the legs, must equal to the C squared, which is the square of the hypotenuse. Okay. Okay. So now here in our diagram, we know that here we go from 8 to 10. That means that this side has length 2. Okay. This side we go from 3 all the way to 7. So I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So I went 4 across. Right? And then I want to find out what this is. My D is. Right? Okay. Now, by the way, I want to point out. I counted it, right? 8 to 9 is 1, 9 to 10 is 2, that's how I know that's length 2. I counted it 3 to 4, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, so I know that the length of this one is 4. But I could have very easily just subtracted, you know, 10 minus 8 is 2, and I could have done 7 minus 3 is 4. Okay, so I could have subtracted it also, but in this case I didn't want to, I didn't, I wanted to make sure that you guys realized that, uh, not to lose touch with what these things mean. That 7 minus 3 represents the length of this segment on the x-axis, or that 10 minus 8 represents the length of this segment on the y-axis, does not take away any value from considering the length of the segment as how many hops you need to go between those numbers. One might seem less sophisticated, but they really capture the same idea. I don't want you to lose sight of that, okay? Now here, we're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem. 2 is a leg because it's not across from the right angle. 4 is a leg because it's not across from the right angle. D is our hypotenuse. So I must have that 2 squared plus 4 squared equals D squared. I know 2 squared is 4. I know 4 squared is 16. So this is 4 plus 16 equals D squared. 4 plus 16 is 20. So 20 equals D squared. And so we know, of course, that D is going to be the square root of 20, okay? Which, as we know, we got before, can be simplified to 2 square root of 5. And so, yes. And so that's another way of looking at this problem. And I think that both techniques are fully valid. What I also want you to notice here is that the distance formula that you'll see written down that we wrote here that we derived earlier is basically, uh, it's just the Pythagorean theorem rewritten with algebra, okay?
So in some sense, the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem are rough, are like, we can use them interchangeably, okay? Um, but of course, the big one, the one that is one of the heritages of humanity is the one that has been passed down to us, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Anyway, we'll talk about that later, and I hope you've enjoyed this example, and we'll be talking.